Good morning. Good morning. A very sincere welcome to our guests and visitors joining us today. We follow the order of services printed in our worship folder. We stand for the opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of you, and of your will, and true obedience to your word. To the end, that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. It is good to praise the Lord. 
and make music to your name, O Most High. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. The salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in time of trouble. Glory be to the Father and to the Son. And to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High. Let us pray. Grant, merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the 16th Sunday after Pentecost is from the 55th chapter of Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Epistle is from the first chapter of Philippians. Now I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. Because of my chains, most of the brothers in the Lord 
have been encouraged to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. For I know that through your prayers and the help given by the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage, so that now as always Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far, but it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain, and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that through my being with you again, your joy in Christ Jesus will overflow on account of me. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then, whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit, contending as one man for the faith of the gospel without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign for them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved, and that by God. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for him, since you are going through the same struggles you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Holy Gospel, which serves as the sermon text, is according to St. Matthew, the 20th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire men to work in his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About the third hour he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, You also go and work in my vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, and did the same thing. About the eleventh hour he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, You also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about the eleventh hour came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more, but each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These men who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, 
Friend, I am not being unfair to you. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the man who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith in Luther's explanation to the third article. I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the Gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith, in the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth, and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead, and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. There are always those who grumble and complain. 
I watched a documentary this last week on the life of Winston Churchill. He was the Prime Minister of Britain in the days leading up to and including World War II. There was one high society woman who constantly grumbled and complained at Churchill's conduct of the war. To her, he couldn't do anything right. As she was quite vocal, a source of constant irritation. But one day out of frustration, she said to Winston, if I were your wife, I would poison your tea. Churchill didn't miss a beat. He said immediately, ma'am, if you were my wife, I'd drink it. <laughs> the first workers in Jesus' parable, they are the ones who are grumbling and complaining constantly. Those who worked all day in the sun, they got the same pay as those who had worked only one hour. They grumbled. It's not fair. You're playing favorites because you're not treating us fairly. The vineyard owner, who is in this parable God himself, he doesn't operate in the usual way. And that's a good thing because we are receiving what we don't deserve, forgiveness, life, and salvation. Good thing. So when it comes to God being so generous, don't grumble. First of all, don't grumble at God's generosity because his grace is for everyone. God really doesn't play favorites. He wants everyone to go to work in his vineyard. In other words, to be in his kingdom. He wants everyone to be saved. Look how many times the landowner went to the marketplace to find workers. Not once, but five times. Six in the morning, nine in the morning, 12 noon, and then three and five o'clock in the afternoon. This was a familiar scene in first century Palestine. And it's still seen in some parts of the American Southwest. Freelance laborers show up early in the morning in hope of being hired for the day, especially at the harvest time. A denarius was the usual wage for a day's worth of unskilled labor. The first group of workers hired at 6 a.m. actually demanded their wages. Notice what the landowner says. He says that he agreed to pay them a denarius for the day. They insisted on making a verbal contract that he would agree to. No such demand or contract is made about the wages of the other workers. The landowner simply says to them, work and I will give you what is right. So they trust in him. They trust that he certainly will give them what is right. Notice that the initiative in this hiring process, it lays with the landowner. He is the one who goes to them. They don't go to him. And that's the way it is in God's kingdom. God's the one who comes to us. He is the one who does the calling. God reaches out to everyone. In every walk of life, young or old, through the sacrament of baptism and the gospel of God's salvation in Christ crucified. God so loved the world and everyone in it that he gave his only begotten son. This includes everyone in this room today. It doesn't matter how sinful you think you are. Sinners, one and all, are welcome. We are beginning our Sunday school uh, today. And there was once a Sunday school teacher who had just finished a fascinating account of all the joys and wonders of heaven. Now, she said, how many of you want to go to heaven? All the children raised their hands, all except one boy. Puzzled, the teacher asked the boy, don't you want to go to heaven? Yeah, he said, but not with this crowd. You know, we can see the sinfulness and shortcomings of so many other people, can't we? 
But no matter how sinful we or they might be, everyone is still included in God's invitation and His gift of forgiveness, life, and salvation. Do you ever feel that you're kind of left behind in the marketplace? Do you ever feel that you're not inside God's vineyard, but you're on the outside looking in? Do you ever feel that all the work that you're doing doesn't seem to be making much of a difference, and you don't have a real purpose for life? Well, God comes to you and He says, you also go and work in my vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. What a wonderful invitation. Trust in him. Serve him. And he will give you what is right. Namely, the very treasures of heaven itself. You tell me, how can you grumble when you work for God? How can you grumble when no one's excluded? How can you grumble when the rewards are literally out of this world? Secondly, uh, don't grumble at God's generosity because God's grace is freely given. The owner of the vineyard doesn't operate in the usual way. You do so much for me and I will do so much for you. In fact, we get what we don't deserve. We all deserve to be damned in hell because by nature we are sinners through and through. The Bible says this in Ecclesiastes, there is not a righteous man on earth who does what is right and never sins. If we are to be paid anything, it should be death. The wages of sin is death, Paul says. We should be grateful that we receive anything that's good from God. Now, the grumblers here in Jesus' parable, uh, they are representing the Pharisees who didn't see it this way. They said, these men who were hired last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. They failed to recognize and acknowledge that God's grace was so gracious Everyone receives an equal measure of grace, his undeserved love, whether they've been a believer their whole life long, or whether they came to faith in the last hour of their life. Can you imagine a genuine disciple of Jesus grumbling because the thief on the cross, he receives a place in heaven, along with a lifelong, hardworking church member? I don't think so. Therefore, this first group of laborers were actually hypocrites. Jesus is referring to the Pharisees. All the laborers were working side by side, apparently with the same intentions and motives in the visible church or the visible vineyard, as if they were all true believers and workers. What they really were is shown in the last part of the parable, when the landowner says, I'm not being unfair to you. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go, as in go away. Get out of here, depart from me. I want to give the man who was hired last the same as I gave you. My friends, this is what the cross is all about. Christ has borne all our sins. He who knew no sin, bore the sins of every person who has ever lived in the past and who ever lived into the future. What a wonderful promise that is. He did that on the cross of Calvary. Now, some might grumble. The Pharisees did. That's not fair. We should be paying our own way to heaven. That's exactly really what happened. Jesus was the one who paid the debt of sin completely. It's not fair for another reason. It's unequal. Convicted murderers and thieves who turn to him receive the same undeserved love as Sunday school teachers and martyrs. The slate is wiped completely clean for those who put their trust in Jesus. Never again will you have to avoid God because of your unworthiness. 
Ty Cobb is one of the great, greatest baseball players of all time. He set 90 major league baseball records in his long career. He still holds several records, including the highest career batting average. You know what his batting average was for his career? 366. That is incredible. However, Ty Cobb wasn't a very nice man. He was an avote, a devout racist, he was mean and nasty, and he was anything but a good role model for children. In 1961, Ty Cobb lay dying. Reportedly, there was a pastor who came to his bedside during this difficult time. He urged Ty Cobb to repent of his sins and to put his trust in his Savior who would forgive all of his sins. Ty Cobb looked up from his deathbed and he said, you're not telling me that a whole life of sin can be done away with by a deathbed repentance, are you? The pastor assured Cobb that it could. And Ty Cobb came to faith in Jesus as his savior. Shortly thereafter, he died. And we can only assume that as he passed through the gates of heaven, he did so as if he had been a Sunday school teacher his whole life long. We may not be equals on the baseball field or the athletic field, but at the foot of the cross, we are equal. We are all sinners who receive God's undeserved grace. I know what some may be thinking, hopefully none of you. Pastor Fanker, why don't we just go ahead and live a life of sin and wait until the last moment to repent. I mean, if you're going to receive the same reward, why not party hardy up until the very end? In answer to that question, I would say, that's not the genuine response that we have when we appreciate God's grace. Out of gratitude, we want to live a God-pleasing life. We want to flee a life of sin. You tell me, how can you grumble when all, all sinners are received into heaven by God's grace? You can't, can you? His grace is for everyone. His grace is freely given. And thank God it is. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all our understanding Guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. As we give our offerings to the Lord, let us pray. Dear God, how generous you are providing us with all that we need for our souls and bodies. Instill within us a spirit of generosity and unselfishness that makes us willing to spend and be spent for you. May Christ, who placed his very life in our service, dwell within us, causing us to live our lives and give ourselves for you. In his name, amen. Please stand for the prayer of the church. Let us pray to the Lord, confident that he hears and answers our prayers. That we may delight in the light of Christ and his salvation, and that sinners may find refuge in his mercy and comfort in his forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. That we may hear the voice of God speaking in his word and be nurtured by faithful pastors who preach and teach this gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy that this word may be the foundation of the home, that husband and wife may be united in this faith and hope, and that their children may hear and be nurtured in this word by faithful parents. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. That the church may nurture the lives of our children in Sunday school and catechism classes, and that we may all be grounded in the doctrine of scripture through the study of God's word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
that the Lord may bless missionaries far and near, that he may nurture newly planted congregations, and that he may renew those congregations in distress, that those from every nation and culture may be united with us in faith and life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may enjoy the blessings of good government, faithful leaders, peace in our land, and peace among the nations, and that we may be good citizens and neighbors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the sick may be healed, especially those suffering from COVID-19, as well as Linda Barklage, Kelly Beebe, Hannah Billman, Ralph Briegel, Jim Gallagher, John Gross, Bonnie Kroger, Gwen Marshall, Tony Michaels, Don Nitz, Muriel Pohl, Tom Powers, Kathy Quickle, Becky Roos, Holly Roos, Nancy Reisner, Les Trulin, and Stan Witkowski. And that all may be delivered from fear and despair by God's gracious care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have Lord. mercy. Hear the prayers of your people, O Lord, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. At this time of installation for our Sunday school teachers and staff, I ask the following to uh, come forward. Uh, Pre-K through K, uh, Vaughn de Koopmans and Emily Hauser. Grades one to three, Debbie Hauser. Grades four and five, Mark Dierks. Grades six to eight, Rachel Bailey. Uh, Ann and Spencer Borboom, who are teaching high school. And Sunday school superintendent, Wendy Klender. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you are to serve our Lord as teachers and staff of our Sunday school. Hear what Holy Scripture has to say about those who serve in his church. Let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thanksgiving in your hearts to God, whatever you do. In word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. In the presence of this Christian congregation, uh, I now install you uh, as teachers and staff of our Sunday school in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, visit this Sunday school staff with your love and favor. Enlighten their minds with the light of your gospel. Place in their hearts a love of the truth and increase in them true faith. Nourish them with your goodness and of your great mercy. Keep them in your love that they may be faithful in their service to the children of St. Mark's. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank you. Please stand for the preface to communion, page nine. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. O Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us and grant us your peace. And is God here? Oh yes, by word and promise clear. In mouth and soul, He makes us whole. Christ truly present in this meal. Taste and see, the Lord is real. Is this for me? I am forgiven and set free. I do believe that I receive His very body and His blood. Oh, taste and see. Please stand for the Nunc Dimittis, page 11.
blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, and learn, and inwardly digest them, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Today, all Sunday Bible classes, uh, mine as well as Crosstalk, has resumed. Uh, mine is a study on the Amish and Mennonites, and the other is studying uh, First and Second Kings. Sunday school began today, and we also begin again our six o'clock worship service this evening. I do indeed uh, thank uh, personally uh, all the Sunday School teaching staff uh, for you stepping forward, and making sure that our children are instructed in the Christian faith. We still have some open positions. Uh, the next voters meeting will be, well, for, that, is it January that we elect the new, or is it uh, October? October 18th is the next meeting. We'll elect them then. Yeah, you're elected then. We still need uh, different uh, positions to be occupied. Please prayerfully consider using your gifts and abilities to serve uh, here at St. Mark's. Uh, next Sunday uh, will be a bit different. Uh, we will begin communing around the altar again. You simply follow the same instructions as we've been doing. And instead of coming up here to the white tables, you're going to come up and go around the altar, and there are places for seven people six feet apart. So it'll be nice. We'll, we will take out uh, this, the center two. We'll still leave two tables so that after everyone communes around the altar, if there are those who still feel more comfortable using uh, the white tables, uh, we can commune them there as well. Now, when you uh, receive communion, uh, you will not kneel. We don't want you to hold on to the communion rail. Um, we'll still have the wafer on top of the cup, and we will wipe down the, uh, the railings here as you come up the steps after each table. Let's see what else. I think that covers it. Is there anything else we need to share at this time? Oh, Anne's hand. thank you for being our vocalist today. What's your hand up for? The Alabama National Convention in 2021 is going to be in Lexington, Kentucky. And Liz Underwood, Lisa Ronis, and I are all serving on the host committee. And we need volunteers. So if you would like to volunteer to be a helper at the next National Alabama Convention in Lexington, talk to one of us and we can give you some 
more information about that. Wonderful. They have the international convention so close. That's great. Okay. You did very well with your teaching voice. <laughs> Anything else that needs to be shared? If not, we can exchange our uh, hellos as we depart. <laughs>